Cab, 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 no. Cab, no. Sit down. Cab, sit down. Good boy. Close to the vehicle. So, I am going to leave it. Hey, what's going on, guys? My name is Rodriguez Carter, and today we're going to be talking about car manners and how dogs should react inside of a vehicle. And what are the consequences when you don't control this? How does this affect your overall lifestyle? So today we're sitting in the vehicle. We have two pressers in us with us. Pressers are very guardian breeds. We have diamond and we have smoke. <laughs> smoke, you can see right here. He's ready for the smoke. That's why we call him smoke. And this is diamond. She's just chilling. She reacts if he reacts. So right now we're sitting in the vehicle. And we're going to go through some steps on how we could help your dog with them not reacting in the vehicle and what you should be looking for when you're in a vehicle with your animal. So you guys stay tuned. Taste this. This thing is delicious. Yeah.
And now you'll see how close they get to the vehicle. He just watches. Good boy. Good leave it. And that's that's kind of how it is, guys. If um all right guys, so first up we are in the vehicle and you're gonna see that there's cars going by, there's everything that you would suggest that would be a, a, a stimulus for the dog. But wait. What is a stimulus for a dog mean? A stimulus for a dog can be anything that elicits a response or reaction from the dog's sensory system. This can include sounds, sights, smells, touches, movements, or even changes in the environment. Examples of stimuli for dogs include food, toys, other animals, people, unfamiliar objects, and, and various environmental cues. And let's talk about stimulus. Stimulus is anything that the dog's gonna react to. Stimulus can be a treat, stimulus can be a toy, a stimulus can be a person, a stimulus can be a sound, it could be a smell. Anything that stimulates the dog to react good or bad is a stimulus, right? If the dog is neutral to it, then it is not stimulating them. They could care less. So uh, being outside, you have environmental stimulus, you have cars going by, you have noises, you got people talking, you've got a auto center down there. So these are stimuluses, right? Your dog is either gonna like it, love it, hate it, or not feel a way about it. One of the one ways that you can start to get your dog used to the stuff when they're a puppy is you come out whenever your spouse or somebody you know is gonna go um, shopping or something and you don't wanna really go, just go out and sit in the car while they go inside and go shopping and allow the dog to see these stimulus. Now, when your dog is in this situation, you need to be in a position to correct them if they start to become aggressive, right? So there's methods, trainers, a lot of trainers use to do that. Um, I'll list some here. Um, and everyone has their own little uh, knowledge. These guys were actually trained uh, in their obedience with impulse stuff. So once we moved to this part of the training, this was a no brainer, okay? Once we got here, it was a no-brainer. So we started with impulse, and impulse you could start with with the ball, right? Making it all wait before they go out a door, or before you give them the ball, or before they get them a treat, right? Make them stay and wait. So you start with impulses. If a dog is impulsive, they're just gonna. There's like a person that uh, the people that cuss all the time. They're just gonna blurt out stuff, right? Um, and uh, they're gonna blurt out. So they're just gonna bark on people. And you see, there's another person. I'm gonna knock it off. Another person's people coming over here. They're walking past the vehicle. And at this point, I would say to him, leave it. Smoke. Good boy. And you see how he turned his eye off the person? The person's getting in the vehicle. So I, I didn't allow him to wait until he started barking. I corrected him. Once he closed his mouth, he was... So when they're gonna do something they're not supposed to be doing, their mouth is gonna close first. Like lunge at someone, bark at someone, bite at someone. Their mouth's not going to be wide open. It's going to close. You can see right there. Diamond, knock it off. Stop trying to chew on the truck. So having them come out, having your dog come out and just sit around is going to be a good way. To... This is called socializing. Now, eventually, when you're doing this process, the dog has to come out of the vehicle. The dog is going to have to go in public. The dog is going to have to be around people, see other animals. But you want to slow process, walk that process by having a dog just relax. Just hearing the noises. You can do this in your vehicle, right? And again, I know one thing you see a lot of training on is a lot of dogs doing uh, protection work and they're being reactive with the dog in the vehicle. Now, if your dog doesn't know when not to do that, you shouldn't be training your dog. I'm doing that. If they don't know what normalcy looks like, just a normal person walking past a car, probably something bad to do. A lot of training you see online, you'll see the dog do the training, but you don't see how the dog lives in lifestyle when the training is done. Right? 
So again, your dog being able to sit in the vehicle, look at people outside the vehicle and not become aggressive is a great sign of working on impulses. Right, Smoke? Diamond? That's right. So I like to do this with my personal dogs. Yes, he's got on three collars because sometimes I take him off and I use a flat collar. He definitely has on his prong collar for not pulling. I want to be able to have control over him in case he gets out of hand or something's going down. And then he has on his e-collar so I can communicate with him when if he decides that he didn't want to listen. All right? So, yes, we're dog trainers, so we have our methods of why we do what we do. And like I said, not all the time he's going to wear the prongs. Sometimes i got to put him on the flat, which is his spiky collar. But one thing about this collar that he has on, which is important... If he were to get into some kind of incident or a dog fight, you can't bite him around the neck. If you let me show you, you can't. He's got those spikes. So you wouldn't be able to bite him around the neck. So everything serves a purpose. And a lot of dogs are loose. They're running up on him and stuff like that. He's an expensive dog. I'm not going to let him get hurt. Or I'm going to give him the best fighting chance if he got into that kind of situation. Now, here's a good example. You're going to see a guy walking past. Then I go back to the pressers. They're just watching them. This is their instinct. It's to guard and protect, right? He's watching them no matter what. And once he no longer thinks he's a threat, he'll look off to the next thing. They're looking at a lady walking over there. And now he's going to watch everybody from the back. So oh, only one of these dogs you need to know about um, their guarding instincts. They're going to guard no matter where you get them from. But who said they're not going to is in them. It's designed for them. The males are more dominant in guarding than the females. Females are more inside, inside the house. Males guard more outside the house. Females do more inside the house. So if you're in the market and you're looking at getting your oppressor, that's something you need to know. They're very instinctual guarders. But Instinctive guarding refers to a natural behavior in dogs to protect their territory, family members, or resources such as food or toys. Dogs may exhibit guarding behavior when they perceive a threat or intrusion into their space, or when they feel the need to assert their status or control over valuable items. This behavior can manifest as barking, growling, lunging, or even biting in some cases. It's important for dog owners to understand and manage guarding behavior through proper training and socialization to ensure the safety of both the dog and those around them. But we have him to the point where he's not barking at people or being aggressive if they come near the vehicle. Right, we have another guy coming in right now. And as that threat goes away, he looks off. I hope this is a good picture of you seeing it. Um, if you're seeing the way the presses are rolling, Diamond is, is actually snoring with her. Eyes open. So we're going to have another one coming. I think he's going to get pretty close to the, the vehicle. So I am going to leave it. Leave it. And I'm going to give him a command in the beginning to leave it. I know what his trigger is. This is a vehicle leaving. So that's kind of how it is, guys. If they, if you ever got your dog and you're in, a, in the parking lot, you really need to have parking lot manners. Uh, it's going to spook the other person. It could cause danger. They could jump out in front of a vehicle with your dog barking at them. So it's really good to have a dog that's going to can see things but not react to them. So I definitely uh, suggest that you take your dogs out you know, I don't care if you sit in a Walmart parking lot, allow them to see things 
and allow them to um, get used to people walking near the vehicle because again if you don't whenever someone gets that close they're going to go off and then you're going to have a reactive dog when you come out of the vehicle when you're when you finally make it to your destination and it's going to mess you up all right so i'm rodriguez carter you guys be good i hope that was a good analogy of car matters